What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to be diagramming the React components from my side project. If you guys are new to the channel, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything along those lines, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me just stay motivated to keep making these videos for you guys. All right, so I'm gonna be completely honest. Uh, this is gonna be my first time actually diagramming my React components. And so that's kind of why I wanted to make the video because I already know that if anybody out there knows React, they're probably gonna grill me on my whole formula on how I design and diagram these components. But I think that um, for me in this project, I realized I got to a, a point where I realized that I can't just start writing a bunch of code and making a whole bunch of components without having a design or architecture or something. The same way I would design my back end, I need to think about and design my front end components and how I want to pass data from one component to the other. Especially being brand new to React and the idea of state, it gets a little confusing and it can really get messy and you might limit yourself down the road if you start kind of just hacking solutions together early on. So in this video, I'm gonna try to actually sit here and diagram um, me brainstorming and thinking through the design and the diagramming of my React components. I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. And then maybe at some future video, um, I'll show you guys the project, how I like code it up and how it all comes together. I'm sure you'll see it on the channel at some point. But in this video, it's gonna be a little ad hoc and we're just gonna go with it. I don't really know where we're going with this. I hope y'all learn, but if nothing else, just learn from the process of just getting started and learning from just digging in. Uh, this is actually the MVP products and I'm modeling the current one that I'm rebuilding a little bit after this UI. So this right now is my, uh, my front end. I know it looks horrible and everything, but there's been no design or anything put into this right now. So we got the home component, we got the login component, and then we got the sign up component. We got teacher and student login, and these each take us to a different screen. And then right now I can actually log in. So if we inspect the page and then this is the teacher login component, I should say, um, because there's gonna be two different types of users. So then I can submit that request and then you guys can see down here, I get my token back down here and everything. So my authorization, authentication, everything is working. Um, so this is what we have right now, but I need this now when I log in, I need to be able to go to another screen and then start letting my teacher users do something. And then if I go to the student login and they log in over there as a student, they should be able to go into the student side of the app and they should be able to do some stuff as a student. So again, I've got a couple of components right now and I'm trying to just think through how I can clean up a little bit. So to give you guys an idea of where we're going with this, um, this is my initial MVP. And you can see like I've got a uh, teacher login here, student login here. So that's why I was going that way with the button. So you can see if I click like this, it takes me to a form like this. So I'm thinking about also designing um, something similar, like making the, the forms look a little bit more conventional. Um, same thing if you go to student, it would look like that as well, but like this. But I also want to design the actual functionality of the application when I get inside, not just the, the login form. So I don't know how far we're going to get in this video, but I just figured I would just record my screen and just go in and brainstorm and put ideas together, talk about it all at the end, and hopefully some value comes out of it for you guys out there. state in each one so that that way if any of the components need to have state 
um, I'll already have at least maybe thought through it a little bit, and then I can I can see or think about how my data is gonna move through my components better. I believe the login component is also gonna need to have my token actually as well too. Um, guys, I'm definitely not a UI designer, so uh, if my mockups are not the sexiest, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so my login component is gonna hold my email password and my server response as data or as state because I'm gonna have uh, I'm gonna have my token. I'm gonna have my token inside of here. I'm gonna have my email inside of here, and I'm gonna have my role inside of here. So all those things, my server response, all those things are gonna need to become state. Your role as a teacher, so we're gonna go to the teacher database and we're gonna need to get all your classes. So we're gonna need to know what classes you have access to. So my state is gonna definitely have to have classes. All right, so then once you, so then once you log in um, from the teacher dashboard, the next one will be the, I would say like the, the classroom component or uh, Yeah, I would, I would call it a classroom component because when you click inside of it, um, the classroom will need to have, the classroom will need to go to our database. It'll need to look up all the students that are in that class because when the teacher clicks on the classroom, the teacher should be able to actually see all the students that are in that class, obviously. So we'll want to, I think we'll want to have students as state um, in our classroom component because again, that's going to be an array of students that we're going to have to iterate through and then show them on the actual com the classroom component when the teacher clicks in it to go edit or do something in the classroom. So I could also I could also edit the classroom here. So in the case of editing the classroom here, um, our state would also become like the name for the classroom, and then yeah. So I would say like students students name and then i guess any other like miscellaneous data so like i'll 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 just account for it here and i'll just call it like class related data all right so we're starting with the login component we authenticate and then we either go to the teacher dashboard or the student dashboard um for the student dashboard, um, the state, the student is going to need to know when they first log in, they're going to need to know uh, classrooms as well. Um, so what we'll do is we will look up um, the same way that we look up for the teachers, uh, what classrooms they have. Uh, we'll, for the student, we'll look up what classes they are in and what classes they have projects in. And then we'll show them those classes when they go to well, once they authenticate and go to the student dashboard. The student user flow is a little bit simpler, actually, than the teachers. So once a student logs in and they can see all their classes, they want to be able to look in those classes and see the project. So the students will also have a classroom view. So, uh, so I'll call it student. I'll, start, I'll call it student classroom and then this one this one can be uh, this one can be teacher classroom just so that it's not so confusing so on the student classroom component once they click in that classroom they just need to see the projects and when they go inside of a project the student needs to see so that component will have to hold all the tasks for that project Um, it'll hold the due date. So we need to have a teacher project component. We need to have a teacher project component. And so from the teacher project, the teacher is going to need to have, again, the name, the description. The description. The due date. Yeah, turn me up, bro. And um, the tasks. Uh, it's gonna also have to know the groups, 
and then it's also going to have to be any miscellaneous data for a project so my project my teacher project component is going to be pretty big this is getting into the meat and the flow of the project like i mentioned before um maybe not in this video uh, i probably should have but um in another video that um this is basically going to be like an accountability tool on the project so bro. the project piece is the the big you know data heavy meat and potatoes kind of of the product so um so that right there i think is gonna that makes sense that there's so much state in my teacher project component because that's gonna be where a lot of the data gets basically guys if we walk through high level where we started it's basically that our user is gonna come to this you know home page and they're gonna log in right so logging in for us is up here so we can see that login has state of email and password which you guys can see um, if i click on one of these this is a login component right here so this form is the login component it's being rendered right now inside of another component called teacher login but we'll change that and so this is what it has right now um, for state email and password and when we send that response to somebody authenticates, then we get a token, an email, and a role. So all that state is gonna be held inside of our login component. And then once we authenticate them, we're gonna take them to the teacher dashboard or the student dashboard based on the role that we got in the login component. If they're a teacher, they'll be able to go inside that classroom. They'll be able to add students, change the name of the classroom, and then do other miscellaneous stuff like updating the classroom and whatever other features we build in in the future. Um, and for students, when they go into the classroom, they'll be able to see all the projects. So then for the teacher, um, if they go inside a classroom and then go inside of a project, they'll be able to update the name, the description, the due date, the tasks, the groups themselves, and then all the other data related to the project will be inside the teacher project component. So yeah, for students, um, you come in, they see the classroom, they can see whatever projects that they're in in that classroom. And then inside that project, they can see whatever tasks, the due dates, and then um, other miscellaneous things that they have going on. So. Guys, like I said, this is my very first time ever diagramming out and kind of thinking through high level brainstorming my my front end and writing out the, you know, outline overview of my components. So please, guys, you know, I'm totally open for feedback. Let me know down in the comment section down below if this was helpful for you guys. And then if you guys are brand new to coding or you think about going to a coding boot camp or you're just starting to teach yourself how to code or anything like that. Check out the description box down below for my free intro to coding bootcamp course where I teach you guys pretty much everything that I wish that I knew about coding bootcamp before I went. So it's got front end projects in there. It's got the intro to back end stuff in there. So it's a really good project. Also check out the free private Facebook group where I drop all the other like free resources and stuff that I don't just share in the description box of all these videos. So yeah, make sure you guys go jump in there and uh, get added to the Facebook group so you can stay up to date and get all these other resources to keep getting better. <sighs> so guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, again, please like, share, subscribe, um, and I'll catch you guys next one. All right, this is Darian with Danny Death. Peace.